We are talking with Phil Waldrop today who wrote a book with a fascinating title, Stop Chasing Happy. And Phil, right before the break, you were talking about how uh, Paul wrote the book of Philippians, the book known as the book of joy. And he was in prison. He was going through a terrible time. And I'm just thinking right now we are in the month of December the month of Christmas, the month of joy. And yet people are going through some very difficult circumstances. They want that joy that they hear about all around them, but they're not experiencing that. Can you just speak into that person's heart and encourage them on how they can find joy even in the midst of their pain? Absolutely, Anna. You know, one of the things I've discovered about the Christian life is the things that can give us the greatest joy also can give us the greatest pain. For example, our family can give us joy, but our family can also bring us great pain. And when we think about the holidays, like the Christmas holidays, these are days that generally we have associated with joy and fun. But this year, if you lost someone who's very dear to you, if you lost a, a relationship or a job, or maybe economically things are not well for you right now, this can be a really tough time because you see other people with family members and they're laughing and they're having joy and you're watching maybe a movie and it's, it's talking about the joy and at least in the movie, the story ends up joyful and you're not experiencing that joy. Let me share just a couple of things that I think will help you. First of all, understand that joy is not based upon people or circumstances. Joy can come from our walk with the Lord. Now, granted, I believe in the scriptures that all of those people that we consider heroes of the faith, they cried. Our Lord cried when his friend Lazarus died. So if you need to have time where you just cry and pour out your heart to God, it's okay. God understands. You're not going to tell anything God he doesn't already know. You may even tell the Lord, Lord, I'm having a really hard day. And you know what? Our Lord will say, let me spend it with you. And he'll spend that day with you. I can't promise you that you're gonna end the day with all smiles and shouting and happy. It may not end that way, it may end with tears. But as the Old Testament says to remember that even though weeping may endure for the night, joy comes in the morning. And for you, God does have something very special. And just stay close to him, don't run from him. Stay close to him, stay close to people you love. There are people who love you and be around them and you'll get through this season and you'll come through the other side. Remember what I said a moment ago, right now in the midst of the pain, it's hard to see, but see your purpose through the pain and the joy will come again. May not be tomorrow, but it will come. Mm -hmm. I appreciate that so much. It's important to acknowledge the hard thing, to acknowledge that it hurts and that Jesus is with us even in that pain. He is Emmanuel, God with us and he wants us to be close through this season. Another thing that I appreciated you talking about in your book is how it's important to let go of our past in order to move into the future that God has for us. Can you speak a little on that? Well, I find so many people who blame their lack of joy in their life and, and really a lack of purpose on what has happened in their past. And some of that pain may come from people who have hurt them, who have disappointed them. And it may have come from an experience or maybe something they had to do. And they keep blaming that for saying, I can't be happy. Well, the good news is, and you've heard this before, God can take your mess and make it a message. And he can take what was a test and turn it into a testimony that you can turn your pain, the most painful thing in your life, you can turn it into something good if you allow God to do it. You see, the Lord uh, wants us to live in the present, not in the past. And you cannot undo one thing that happened yesterday. It's done. But today, you can say from this point forward, sure, I may have to have some counseling and some people speak into my life to help me process what happened to me. But you can turn your pain into a, to a message. And when you do, the most painful thing may turn out to be something that can be a blessing to other people and you can help them through it. So don't shy away from your past address it and deal with it, but don't let your past rob your joy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you so much, Phil. Before we let you go, can you just take a minute to pray for that person out there today who really longs to experience that joy? I would love to do that. Let's pray right now. Father, 
there are people who are listening right now who are having a hard day and they're hurting. But I pray today that you would help them see that you love them and you care about them. That doesn't mean that every day has to be like a day at Disney World. It just means that you're there with us and you're going to help us through whatever we're doing. You may not be the author of it or the cause of it. So, Father, I pray today that you would help them today to feel your love and to feel that you care for them. And I pray you will bring someone into their life this holiday season who can demonstrate that love to them. For those who have lost someone, and this is a hard time of the year, I pray you will comfort their heart with memories, but also let them see that sometimes when we love, pain comes when we lose someone, but not to allow that to cause us to stop loving people. So Father, I pray for every person who's hurting that today, today, they would find themselves moving closer to you. And as a result, through the pain and through this season, they will find the joy. It may not come right away, but they'll ultimately find that joy to stop chasing happiness and start doing what you call them to do. And I'll thank you and I'll praise you for it. In Jesus' name, amen.